and welcome to DNQ Football, where today we are talking through the semi-recent announcement that the Solomon Islands national football team head coach, Felipe Vega Arango, will not be extending his contract with the national team that ends on the 15th of June, just before the start of the OFC Nations Cup 2024. Now, it wouldn't be right for me to do this video, upload this video, take any credit for this video and not shout out uh, FM Ireland longtime subscriber to DNQ an integral part of our DNQ community a real legend of the game if you will who thankfully picked up on this because it passed us by just before the international win I believe it was around the 7th of March that this news came out so we are a little bit late to it my apologies but thank you to FM Ireland for letting us know so Let's talk about Felipe Vega Aranjo and his tenancy as manager. He's had two stints as head coach of the Solomon Islands going back to 2017 to 2018. And then a little bit of a pause uh, again before 2021 to obviously current day. And he is still manager until the end of his contract at the 15th of June. I'm sure they'll get a new manager in and he'll be let go early. But for now, he is still in place. Let's run through some of the stats and facts for you. In that time, they've played 31 international matches. Now, you've got to think that's not a huge number over a sort of what is seven-year total span. You've got COVID in the middle of that. You've also got the fact that these teams just generally don't play a huge amount of games. So 31 is a decent stint, actually, as manager. Moreover, winning 18 of them is a really, really good return. Drawn five and lost eight, if you include one of those losses as the draw that they then lost on penalties to New Caledonia in the Pacific game. So that's a 58% win ratio. When you consider the fact that Solomon Islands are in a region where they, by default, play New Zealand very often... A 58% win ratio is not too bad. And in fact, talking of New Zealand, the only side that Felipe lost to in World Cup qualification was New Zealand. He was in charge for two campaigns ahead of the 2018 World Cup in Russia and the 2022 World Cup that was, of course, in Qatar. They only lost to New Zealand. In 2017, ahead of the 2018 World Cup, they played New Zealand twice in what was a doubleheader at the time. They lost and then drew. They actually held New Zealand in the second game to a two-all draw. And then, of course, in the tournament that was held in Qatar before the Qatar World Cup, they got through to the final as it was then and lost again to New Zealand. But New Zealand, understandably, as we speak about quite a lot, they are the dominant side in this region. So not a bad return at all. Solomon Islands were 180th ranked in the FIFA World Rankings when he originally took over in 2017 now they stand at 132. So if you think about that, that is a 48 place jump or increase in that time and that 58% win ratio playing a huge part in that. However, can we call it an overall success? A question more than an opinion to start with. Only ever lost in World Cup qualifiers to New Zealand won the 2023 MSG Prime Minister's Cup held in New Caledonia and only took part due to COVID in one OFC, uh, sorry, in a Pacific Games. Never took part in an OFC Nations Cup and of course won't this time either. Pacific Games, they came second. They won the MSG Cup in 2023. They were very poor in 2022 at the MSG Cup that of course um, Vanuatu B played a big part in and PNG went on to win. Second in two World Cup qualification campaigns. How do we feel about that overall? No OFC Nations Cup, because of course it was 2016 and then wasn't held in 2020 and will take place again after he's gone. So one major success for a side that many would believe probably sit around there second, you know, in, in a couple of finals. He actually said when he spoke to an Australian... Uh, Radio station, you know, before me, how many times do they get to finals? Well, a couple, to be fair to the Solomon Islands, but not all that many. He's got two, what is effectively the final, in two back-to-back -back World Cup qualification campaigns. Got to the final of the Pacific Games, the gold medal match, which was at home in Solomon Islands, uh, which, of course, they lost on penalties, so didn't lose in 90 minutes, and won the 2023 MSG Prime Minister's Cup. So, really, only the 2022 MSG Prime Minister's Cup was a bit of a disappointment there. 
Interestingly, success or potentially lack of, not something that the coach is concerned about. He says he's happy with how he did. He thought he performed well. But what he's actually cited is too much drama and not enough appreciation from fans. He says the expectation of what Pacific football fans and Solomon Island football fans believe they should achieve and what they can actually achieve is vastly different. People are expecting too much. If you think about the conditions, the training facilities, they don't have the, um, the physiotherapy or you know, just the whole infrastructure in international football, like, of course, we do in Europe, where he's from, in Spain. And too much pressure, too much drama from the fans, and then not appreciating what he and the players have done have led him to this decision. Apparently, the Solomon Islands Football Federation did try to get him to stay for the OFC Nations Cup, but he declined. And when pressed on when the decision was made, he said it was actually before the Pacific Games. He said he doesn't like playing at home. The players don't like playing at home because there's too much pressure. And he'd made the decision, him and his assistant, before the Pacific Games, if they won or if they didn't, of course, they didn't, that he was going to leave. How do we feel about this overall? Thoughts, feelings, get it down in the comments. I'm sure that if you're watching and you're from the Solomon Islands, you'll be disappointed with some of his comments and potentially the fact that he's leaving. He has been a good coach and he has fostered a good style of football and you've achieved a relative amount of success. I think it's an interesting time to step down. He does have a young family. He'll probably be moving back to Spain and we wish him all the best in doing that. You are going into an OFC Nations Cup where there's a great chance to, again, play well. Achieve some stuff. You're going into another round of World Cup qualification that starts in September. I'll preview for how it works coming in a couple of weeks' time. And Solomon Islands are definitely on the cusp of being that other team. OFC now gets 1.5 places. New Zealand, you'd assume, guaranteed. Solomon Islands, they could be the next team. However, the coach stepping down and won't get the chance to lead them there. Not particularly breaking news here on DNQ. But really interested in your thoughts, feelings, and if you are from the Solomon Islands, who do you want to take over and how do you feel about it as a whole? Solomon Islands manager Felipe Vega Arano, after a seven-year span as national team coach, with a little break in the middle, is stepping down. Thanks for watching and as always, we'll see you next time.